All right, welcome back into Great Day Washington. Time now for our morning mix. And first up, comedian Chris Rock was offered to host the Oscars again this year, and he has turned it down. Mm -hmm. But can you really blame him? Hmm. During a stand-up show in Phoenix this weekend, Rock says he was asked to host the Academy Awards again next year, but apparently he told the crowd he turned down the gig saying Smith's slap hurt and quote, <laughs> he's bigger than me. The state of Nevada would not sanction a fight between me and Will Smith. I get not going back, but I imagine going back and like getting back up there on the stage. It, obviously for the Oscars, they would love that because everybody would watch. Right. But to be able, he, he likened it to like O.J. Simpson going back to the scene of the crime right. or something. Exactly. But he's hosted twice before. He hosted That's in 2005. He hosted in 2016. So it's not something he needs to do no. for his career. No. He even turned down an interview with Oprah where he would do a tell all about what happened. Yeah. He said, I don't want to do it. He's only for, talking know, about in the stand for kind of staying on this side of everything. Yeah, I kind of like it too. All right, 25 years ago today, Britain's Princess Diana died in a devastating car crash in Paris, France. Her death and her life remain a source of fascination and inspiration to people around the world. CBS's Ian Lee is in London with how the People's Princess is being remembered today. Good evening. Britain lost a princess today. The world stood still in the early morning hours of August 31st, 1997. Princess Diana died in a Paris car crash after being chased by the paparazzi. Shock quickly gave way to an outpouring of grief still felt today. I just couldn't believe it. It gives me goosebumps thinking about it. I just couldn't believe that she died. Diana was just 36 and more than a royal. She became a force for good using her famous name to support causes like AIDS awareness and the clearing of landmines. Diana's unique qualities were very much a humanitarian mission, a tactile nature, a, a care and cons consideration for others. Princess Diana lived here at Kensington Palace, a place where people still come to remember her 25 years later. When I see the pictures and something in TV, it makes me sad. In recent years, Hollywood has introduced a new generation to the People's Princess, with the Netflix hit series The Crown to the latest movie depicting her life, one full of helping others. A quarter of a century after her death, Diana's sons, William and Harry, are still following in her footsteps. I hope we can remember my mother's legacy by recommitting to those that we serve, whoever and wherever they may be sharing their mother's spirit to keep her memory alive. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. When you think about the impact that she left, right. you know, in just three decades, mm -hmm. that even three decades later, we're still talking about how much of an influence and impact she had on so many people. She did a lot with her time here. She did, and if you look back to 25 years ago, 30 years ago, you couldn't support a charity by sending out a tweet or something. Yeah. She had to actually go out there. It took a lot of work, and it took a yeah. lot of risk, too. Landmines, AIDS. I mean, she was yeah. doing uh, charities lines. that people were shying away from. Mm -hmm. yeah. She was incredible. I can't yeah. believe it's been 25 years. Absolutely. Okay, open mic is meaning open water in today's Miked Up segment. It's part of our 7 p.m. show where we have conversations with people People doing unique things around the DMV. Yeah, swimming in the Potomac gets mm. a lot of hate, yeah. and the topic, of course, has been trending since the singer Lord told her audience at the anthem this week that she took a swim in the Potomac. She did. But the water <laughs> is actually pretty safe most of the time. Adam Longo, <laughs> this is my favorite story you've ever done. He shows us some swimmers who are not afraid to jump in. We're going to swim in the Potomac River. Right. Make the face that people make to you when you tell them you're swimming <laughs> in the Potomac River. It's a beautiful midsummer day here in the nation's capital. We're actually at National Harbor in Prince George's County, right along the Potomac River, because we're going to show you something pretty cool. This is Dennis Crean. He's the founder of Wave One, an open water swimming group. When you tell people that you take groups out onto the Potomac River to do open water swimming, what's the reaction you get from people? Uh, we get a very various reactions from, wow, that's great, to, ew, that's the Potomac. It's safe to swim here now. Like, I know there was a big thing before that it wasn't as safe, but it's clean now and it's fun swimming. Why does the river have that, you know, perception, and then what do you do to tackle that? 
Yeah, I, I think it's something that came out of the 60s and 70s when there was no regulation and what you know people could dump in it, uh, and, and the health went down. But it's been climbing back to really a very healthy river. Like I said, we've been in it 12 years and uh, incident free, having fun, uh, and it's just it's beautiful. So we're here with Tom, who we actually want to talk to about your shorts. Um, pretty much the shortest I've ever seen. Yeah. So congratulations I've about known that. For, I'm known for that. Talk to me about the group dynamic when you have a swim so, out here. Yeah, so this is a non-competitive, really friendly group. People are here to support each other and to teach each other as much as they can because open water is not like pool swimming. It's not like anything you've ever experienced. So this is catching on. It's growing. It's growing. Well, let's get out there. Let's get after it. All right. All right. <laughs> we're just going to we're going to make it happen. Brought my swim cap, got my Maryland suit, we're ready to go. I gotta tell you, the Potomac River actually tastes great. It's not bad out here. So we're gonna do about 500 meters. Should take about 10 minutes. Let's see how it goes. To know that we have such a, a beautiful resource that has a lot of history and is full of awe. Um, to be able to get more people in to enjoy that, participate and experience it, uh, it, it makes all the work worthwhile. Right. Adam was saying you can't just jump in. You have to get permits to swim. Like right. they have a permit to swim with. <laughs> so you're like, I didn't know we could swim here. Let's go. Well, they Maybe say not. they've been swimming for 12 years, and I'm thinking when I moved here 12, 13 years ago, you all heard I you heard about was you can't go in the Potomac. Yeah, I know. So it's good for them. I'm, yeah, the story broke. I don't a know lot if of. I'm jumping in anytime soon, but <laughs> I'm glad to know it's, a, it's okay. <laughs>